only ones, the only uh, wallet providers who are going to be exempt from reporting are ones who can't do gross proceeds, can't track gross proceeds. So active wallet providers, um, hosted wallet providers are going to be um, re required to report as well. That's not to say that any given business couldn't restructure itself um, in a way or provide data in, in a way that um, would exempt it from the requirements. But um, the previous ability to rely on the fact that I just haven't received client data um, is specifically cited by the IRS in the report as no longer being a basis for uh, not reporting on a go-forward basis. Uh, but that would obviously require some degree of, of change of business model. So I think that that's um, a really important um, uh, change that's going to affect a significant number of people. The definition of broker, unfortunately, contained in these regulations is so sweeping uh, that actually Congress had commented after it enacted the legislation itself and begged the Internal Revenue Service not to interpret the rule in the way that they had written it. Um, <laughs> because that they hadn't an, an anticipated quite so broad a reading. The Internal Revenue Service actually responded in these regulations and said, no way, we're following the words of the statute, and we have an extremely broad definition of who's going to be treated as a broker, including DAOs, um, which there is actually, there's very, could e easily be said there's no there there. There's no centralized person to undertake the reporting. So DAOs could very well be subject to information reporting as well. I think the, the one piece of good news from these proposed regulations is that the list of exempt uh, recipients that, or ex exempt transaction participants uh, follows the existing rules. So non-U.S. persons won't be subject to reporting. U.S. corporations won't be subject to reporting. Financial institutions are not subject to reporting. So it's pretty, pretty clear that what they're getting at are individuals who are transacting in crypto or, or uh, directly or through partnership structures that are um, have the opportunity, because of the lack of current reporting, to avoid um, reporting themselves. They're just, they're the, the the statistics that they've been relying on suggest that it's less than 7% who report anything. And of that 7%, only they're not confident that those people are reporting accurately. So they're trying to capture the 93% of, of people transacting in crypto who they don't think are reporting anything at all and fix the reporting on the 7% that are actually reporting something. But, you know, unfortunately for business, the Internal Revenue Service um, or the government uh, doesn't care what it costs because if it costs five dollars for them to collect a dollar, well, it's not their five dollars, right? So every dollar they get more than they had gotten before is a win, regardless of the fact that the cost of compliance may well exceed um, the amount of revenue that's raised. It's a question or not be possible at all in, yeah. in for certain businesses, right? Which I think is, I'm optimistic that hopefully that definition will be narrowed. Narrow before the compliance date, because honestly, there's a lot of businesses that either just simply won't be able to comply, won't be able to afford it. Um, there's all kinds of technical reasons, and I'm kind of contradicting our, our own revenue at Luca. We support information, so information reporting for enterprises. Um, so that's more revenue for us. But when we're working with our partners, if they just simply can't, then there, there isn't a path forward, and it, it doesn't really support any of the objectives. That, that's that's unfortunately very, very true.